Hello everyone and welcome. The title is as bad as it sounds. Volkswagen was literally sticking monkeys in boxes, uh, forcing them to inhale diesel emissions and using this to prove that their diesel vehicles are clean. And as if gassing monkeys wasn't bad enough, uh, they cheated the results. So in this video, we're going to explain how Volkswagen's defeat device worked, uh, do a little bit of history on how this all came about, and then get into the gassing of monkeys uh, towards the end. So this all goes back to, uh, for example, in America, uh, we have laws that say you shouldn't emit lots of nitrogen oxide emissions uh, because these are bad. They cause respiratory illnesses, uh, they create smog. They cause tens of thousands of premature deaths annually around the globe. Uh, basically, the, the simple thing to know is that nitrogen oxides are bad. So we have rules that prevent them. Uh, and Volkswagen uh, created this device in order to get around the U.S. laws uh, because they wanted the performance and efficiency of diesel engines, but they didn't want to sacrifice anything in the name of emissions. And so they created this defeat device to get around it, um, fooling their consumers, uh, fooling the U.S. environmental agencies. Uh, and so this is essentially what a Volkswagen exhaust uh, diesel will look like. So you've got your engine right here. Uh, we'll just follow the intake path and travel along through our system. Our air comes in, your intake passes through the compressor side of the turbocharger into your intake manifold, then into your cylinder. It's burned off where it goes into the exhaust manifold where it can be routed one of two ways, a high pressure exhaust gas recirculation. Uh, so this is done to, you know, you put some inert gas into the combustion chamber. You're not burning as much air and fuel. And as a result, your combustion temperatures are lower. So lower combustion temperatures means that nitrogen and oxygen, uh, N2 and O2, they don't split off and then reform uh, into nitrogen oxides. So lower combustion temperatures are critical uh, in order to prevent uh, the creation of nitrogen oxides. So that's what EGR is for. So that's the high pressure EGR side, or that exhaust can travel through the exhaust turbine, then through a oxidation catalytic converter, which is breaking down uh, hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide. It then passes through a diesel particulate filter, which gets rid of uh, soot and diesel particulates. Uh, and then it can choose to go between, you've got these valves here, of course, for the EGR systems. The low pressure EGR side, so it's after the turbo, uh, and that's going to go back into the intake portion of the turbocharger and then refed into the intake manifold. Again, this is done to prevent the creation of nitrogen oxides. Then that exhaust can continue traveling through a nitrogen oxide trap. So this chemically, what it does is it has this surface area that stores nitrogen oxide. So the nitrogen oxides want to bond and store within this trap. Uh, and nitrogen oxides are created in lean burning scenarios uh, where you have these higher temperatures uh, in diesel engines and you are not using fuel to get rid of these nitrogen oxides. So diesel engines can have air fuel ratios as high as 70 to 1, 18 to 1 to 71. Uh, but essentially how this nitrogen oxide trap works is it needs fuel in order to break down the nitrogen oxides that are trapped inside. So it will react with diesel fuel and then it will form N2 nitrogen and H2O water uh, as its emissions from that. So you'll get rid of the nitrogen oxide in there, you'll clear out your trap, and then you can go back to lean burning and you know start to refill up this trap after using a little bit of extra fuel in order to clean it out. And then finally you have this hydrogen sulfide to sulfur dioxide converter uh, and then it travels out through the muffler and into you know the air. So that's the system uh, and you know working properly it can create uh, very clean emissions. So Volkswagen's cheat was to have one calibration for when the vehicle was being dyno tested and one calibration for when the vehicle's driving on the road. Well, how does it know that it's driving on the road? Well, because you're going to provide a steering input. So that steering input tells the car, hey, unleash full you know, potential because a, a human is actually driving this. Versus when it's sitting on a dyno and it's just spinning the front wheels, you're not actually steering then it knows, hey, I'm actually being tested right now. And so I'm going to reduce performance, but improve emissions uh, because that will get the EPA off my back. They'll say, hey, your vehicle's super clean and we'll get away with it. So that's what their defeat device does. So how does it alter the parameters in here? Well, when you're driving on the road, it's just going for maximum performance and maximum fuel economy, which are of course traits that consumers want in a vehicle. 
So it will minimize uh, exhaust gas recirculation. That means you're getting more nitrogen oxide emissions, but your performance is greater. It will use a leaner air fuel ratio when possible. This means more nitrogen oxide emissions, uh, but your efficiency is improved. And then it will render this uh, nitrogen oxide trap ineffective. It'll fill it up and then it won't use extra fuel to clear it out because that's just a waste of fuel. Your fuel economy goes down. So you can improve uh, your fuel economy by not using that. The result, however, is that they have 40 times the legal limit of nitrogen oxides coming out of the exhaust. And this was discovered by West Virginia University, some students there uh, who were doing some on-road emissions testing and found out, look, all of these numbers seem way too high. What's going on? Uh, so then they got more people involved. They tried to communicate with Volkswagen. Volkswagen downplayed it, said it was, you know, testing errors. Of course it wasn't. And the fallout was known as Dieselgate, uh, which is an ongoing thing. Volkswagen's lost 26 billion dollars or so uh, as a result of this in fines. And so what happens when the defeat device is on, when it's on a dynamometer? Well, the lean NOx trap is of course activated, so that means worse fuel economy, but you're gonna get rid of those nitrogen oxide emissions. The high pressure EGR, uh, you wouldn't use that as much. Why not use that? Well, that means you're sending performance uh, through, you know, back to the intake rather than spooling up this turbo. So your turbo performance is gonna be reduced. You'll have more lag. You won't have, you know, the same boost created uh, in those portions where you're sending more exhaust gas back through the intake rather than out the exhaust. So you're losing turbo performance in the name of reducing nitrogen oxides. Low pressure EGR, uh, very similar thing. You're gonna be producing uh, less nitrogen oxides by using uh, EGR. However, you're going to be losing performance uh, because you're not burning more air and fuel. You're, you're putting in inert gas uh, into that combustion chamber. And then finally, you can lower the air fuel ratio, uh, and this means less nitrogen oxides used, but it means worse fuel economy, uh, because once again, you're, you're just going to be uh, reacting with the NOx trap, and then just in general using lower the, those lower air fuel ratios, uh, you get worse fuel economy, uh, but you can improve uh, the nitrogen oxide characteristics of the emissions. Okay, so this is how it's all done uh, from an emissions standpoint. Now let's get into the monkey testing. Okay, so moving on to the disturbing information that was facilitated by Volkswagen. So BMW, Volkswagen, and Daimler, uh, aka Mercedes, uh, grouped together to form and fund an organization, a research group called EUGT. And the purpose of this research group was to show that diesels are great, uh, they're wonderful, their emissions aren't that terrible, that kind of thing. So to do research surrounding diesel vehicles and prove to the public that they're wonderful. Now, Volkswagen took the lead role in this monkey study. BMW and Daimler have kind of pulled themselves back and said, uh, we didn't know that they were cheating this test. Uh, we weren't involved. They were the ones facilitating it. And based on the information that's out currently, uh, that looks to be true. It looks like Volkswagen was really the one heading all of this. It was their vehicle and they were overseeing the test itself. So... The EUGT then funded Loveless Respiratory Research Institute, which is an institute in New Mexico in the United States, where they used crab-eating macaques, uh, which are non-human primates, which they can use for testing. So the legal justification for what was done is that we were learning something uh, uh, that could uh, you know, improve the health of humans. Uh, in order to do this, we needed to use something very similar to a human. So the research was done on non-human primates. Uh, in order to learn about the health effects of emissions. Now, this is kind of dumb in the first place because we have the technology to measure exactly what's coming out of exhaust. That's how Volkswagen uh, was discovered to be doing something wrong here in the first place. Uh, we have the technology to do it without monkeys. Uh, it seems a bit silly to do and unethical, but regardless, it was legal to do. They have since uh, gotten rid of this organization. Volkswagen has said they won't be doing any more animal testing, um, but here's how it worked. So, Volkswagen set up dynos and they'd set up the dynos themselves because they wanted to make sure that they could run their dyno calibration, their cheat device during the testing. So they had a 2013 Volkswagen TDI Beetle on a dyno and then they had a 2004 Ford F250 diesel on a dyno. And the, the idea was to show that new diesels are cleaner than old diesels. And I find it a bit, you know, odd that they chose a big diesel engine rather than a small diesel like uh, the, the Beetle. But either way, uh, they wanted to show that new diesels are much cleaner than old diesels. 
And so they had these crab-eating macaques uh, in little boxes uh, where they were trained to watch TV. These macaques were trained to watch cartoons um, so they wouldn't get, you know, super bummed out that they're just sitting in a box for four hours uh, breathing in diesel exhaust. So they're watching the cartoons and they sit in these boxes for three to four hours of exposure uh, where there's a pipe routed in that routes the exhaust into that chamber. Now the chamber of, is of course diluted with fresh air so that you know the monkeys don't die, they're not just going to suffocate from the exhaust, uh, but they are exposed to it. Uh, and so then the, the beetle is running and the F-250 is running. You run them for four hours, you take blood samples, you do lung swabs, throat swabs uh, to find out the particulate matter inside of the monkeys. Uh, and you tested on one and then you tested on the other. Uh, they had 10 monkeys total that they were testing uh, to do this. So Volkswagen requested to Loveless Respiratory Research Institute that they would have real-time monitoring of the emissions coming out of the Volkswagen exhaust. And the reason they wanted this, uh, whatever justification they gave, but the actual reason why they wanted this is to make sure that it was running in its dyno mode, running the defeat device so that the Volkswagen was running super clean so that the results were in their favor. So they were cheating the entire test um, because they knew that their car was going to do better because they were lying about the results by using this defeat device. Now originally, and you can draw your own parallels with Volkswagen's history, but originally they were intending on testing people. So they were going to have humans on uh, exercise bikes in a room with diesel exhaust funneled in and then they would test the people with the Volkswagen versus the F-250 diesel. Now, Volkswagen's head of engineering and environmental office for Volkswagen of America, Stuart Johnson, was asked, uh, doesn't this seem ridiculous that you were going to test emissions on people? And his response was something along the lines of, uh, in retrospect, the optics are not good. And that's probably the most obvious statement that man's ever said. It's absurd uh, that, that they were considering testing humans, putting humans in gas chambers essentially, uh, and forcing them to breathe you know, heavy NOx emissions from a Ford F-250 diesel. Um, so pretty insane. But anyways, they didn't do that. Uh, Volkswagen's general counsel uh, advised against it, said it probably wasn't a great idea. Uh, and so, you know, Hopefully at this point you, you already care about, you know, what's, what's kind of happening here, but if it's not obvious, I'm going to spell it out for you. So, first of all, they are doing emissions testing on monkeys when it's completely unnecessary. We have the technology to know exactly what is coming out of that exhaust. You can compare side by side and say, this one has way more harmful stuff uh, coming out of it than this one does, in this case because this was using a defeat device. We have the technology to do it. We don't need, you know, a random obscure uh, crab-eating macaque to show us what the health effects are. Uh, we can, we can, you know, determine what the emissions are and show that the newer technology is better than the previous technology, which, you know, for the most part, it actually is. Now. The test was a lie, and this is perhaps the most frustrating part, uh, is that they were doing all of this knowing that they were cheating the test. So they were running their defeat device, that's why they had, you know, the dyno calibration, the, the real-time monitoring, um, and, and so they knew going in that the results would show them exactly what they wanted to, it was all a lie. And so what this means is this truck testing was totally pointless. These monkeys here were just used as a very poor marketing stunt to show that Volkswagen was better, when in fact before the test was even shown, they were going to cheat to ensure that the results were in their favor. Um, so, so nothing published, nothing uh, came out of this research, there was nothing published. It was all for nothing um, and unfortunate for the monkeys involved. Uh, and, and I think the other thing here is that this is just a lie to Volkswagen's consumers. They had huge campaigns about clean diesels, um, you know, super efficient, but also fun to drive vehicles, great fuel economy, uh, a better choice, not only for your enjoyment, but for the environment to make versus, you know, a hybrid or a gasoline car or whatever it may be. So it was a lie to consumers because it wasn't actually very eco-friendly. Uh, and it was a lie to all of the Volkswagen employees um, who are just trying to do their best work working at Volkswagen, make the best car that they can, uh, that had no idea that this was going on. And it, and it really sucks for them as well because, you know, they get the reputation that goes along with it even if they weren't involved. Uh, so, so that's definitely disappointing. 
So I want to close this with a very simple message, uh, and it's and it's obvious, but that you know, as humans, we should be good, we should do good, we should do the right thing. And what's super frustrating about this scenario is that so many people at Volkswagen knew that this was happening, and none of them stepped forward until it was pointed out by a third party that they were lying. So West Virginia University said, you know, you guys are uh, something's wrong with your emissions here, and Volkswagen downplayed them and said, no, it's probably your test equipment. And then California Air resource board got involved and they said look Volkswagen you guys are, are definitely doing something wrong here and they said no it's it's your testing equipment you guys are just not testing it correctly we're not doing anything wrong so they continued to lie when internally they knew what they were doing was wrong and that's extremely frustrating and I think we just need to be better people we need to do good and so as a small gesture I am going to be donating $1,000 to West Virginia University uh, towards financial aid for students to get, you know, books, food, rent, whatever it needs, uh, the students that need financial assistance. So I'm donating that $1,000. I would, of course, encourage any of you, if there's something you're passionate about, uh, donate it to it today. You'll feel good about doing it. Um, and I'll include a link to West Virginia University if you'd like to donate to West Virginia. And I will also include links in the video description for more information about this. There's a really good Netflix documentary on it. Um, uh, but the general message is we should be good. As humans, we need to do the right thing. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.